In this episode of MGUI, I'm going to be interrogating the brain of the CL65 with this. So if you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. I've got a back catalogue of about 130 videos of um, a Maserati Gran Turismo, an Audi R8, and this incredible Mercedes-Benz CL65 with a V12 engine and a thousand newton meters. So if you like what you see, it'd be great to have you as a subscriber. So we're here at the beautiful Woodford Bay foreshore um, to see if we can try and interrogate the control units of the CL65 um, with this knockoff um, Chinese multiplexer star diagnostic system, um, which I think I mentioned in a previous video I'd ordered off eBay. So for 600 euros or about a thousand Aussie dollars, you get a package that contains a laptop, um, your standard OBD2 port connector, an ethernet connector to link the multiplexer directly to the laptop, but then also a bunch of other connectors for what I can only assume are older cars, including one that has a whole set of banana plugs, which is really kind of funny. I'm assuming that these different connectors are for older or different types of vehicles. It's pretty comprehensive, really. Then the unit itself looks okay. Um, it's clearly built to a price, but does the job. Then there's an old Dell laptop, which has all the software on it, and it has Wi-Fi connectivity so that you can create a wireless connection between the multiplexer and your laptop. So let's see if we can connect it and uh, get into the guts of the CL65. So under the driver's side footwell, there is a little cover here, which unclips. Then we can connect the diagnostic system to the port. There we go. It automatically starts booting up. So this is the rather crappy laptop that comes with it, a very ancient Dell running Windows 7. And so in order to get this to connect, we just need to reboot the device itself. So this is a, it's like an ad hoc network. So it's just between the two devices. There's no router required to um, establish this connection. So it'll reboot and then hopefully it will automatically connect to this ad hoc network here. And that little red X should disappear, all being well. And yep, it says connected now and the red X has disappeared, which is great. So now what we should be able to do is we'll just turn on the ignition of the car. If I can reach, there we go. And then we will just launch this Xentry diagnosis. Xentry, Xentry. Hope you can see this okay. So there are a couple of things I know are wrong with the car. Firstly, we get some parking sensor errors and we also have a defective seat bolster in the driver's seat. Um, so what we can do is focus on those two control units and see what we can pick up. So I've already set this software to go straight into the passenger car area. But just to show you, you can look at a whole range of Mercedes-Benz vans, massive trucks. I have no idea what a Unimog is. Buses even. Under super sports cars, we've got the SLR. Industrial major assemblies, that's uh, pretty awesome. Uh, looks like massive cranes and stuff. <laughs> It's really crazy. I also didn't mention that Mercedes is only one of 10 different brands that the system caters for, including Smart, Maybach, and various brands of commercial vehicle like Fuso and Freightliner. So let's just go back to passenger cars because that is easier. Now, if we click this automatic vehicle determination, it should start interrogating 
the uh, multiplexer and read the VIN number. Let's see if it will do that. Now, there we go. So it has correctly identified the, the model and the um, engine and transmission. So we can now, you can also select that manually, of course, um, but that shows that the communication is working. We can go into the diagnosis module. Lots of warnings, which we will completely ignore. And again, so now it's flashing to show that it's communicating, which is a good sign. I spent ages yesterday trying to get this to work before realizing I had one digit wrong in the IP address. Okay, then there's a warning about battery levels, which we will ignore again. So now we're into the main menu of the diagnosis system. Um, let's do a quick test and this will go through all the control modules and uh, look for any fault codes. Let's do that. You can see it's going through the various ECU modules. Oh, I just felt the seats pop there as it went through the uh, dynamic seats. Diagnosis has just popped up on the uh, screen there showing that it's interrogating. So most of these have got a tick next to them which means they're okay. Not quite sure what that means. Maybe that means there's a fault. I don't think so. This means a fault, definitely, the F. So right front dynamic seat, fault. Yep, that's what we, we thought might be the case. And that's it. So if we look through here, um, everything's pretty good. Radar sensors control unit. Now that might be something to do with the park sensor issue because those two systems are linked. Um, let's have a look at that one. So it's looking at the SGR unit. Function supported by the control unit, object recognition, distance control, speedtronic park assist. Continue with button F2. So we've got a submenu here, control unit version, fault codes. Let's have a look. So there's no fault codes which is interesting. Let's go back. Event memory. Okay, so we've got some events stored here in memory and they all seem to be the same. Radar sensor disrupted by interference from an external transmitter. So let's have a look at the detail of this one and see what, if we can just double click whether that comes up. Possible causes of fault left in a radar sensor, front bumper, impaired functions, park assist and distronic. So this is basically showing exactly the fault that we're getting on the park sensors and the distronic. What we can do about it, however, I wonder what F8 does. Does that give us more information? Yes, it does. So what it says, <laughs> this fault has occurred at least 255 times. Okay, so that means that it's an 8-bit register, which means that it obviously has a maximum of 255 values plus zero. So it's happened a lot. Kilometer reading, current values first, last. Yep, so it's happened a lot even between those tiny amounts of kilometers. Vehicle speed 10, day 24th, 25th, June, July, August 2019. So that is clear that this is happening a lot. External interference on the radar sensors. So there's not much we can do about that, I don't think. Let's just go back. Um, then we have a whole bunch of stuff that we can go into further. Then we have a bunch of adaptations and guided tests. Control module programming, initialization of control module, when the control module is initialized, internal control module parameters are reset to their original value. Let's have a look. Switch off ignition. Switch on ignition. OK, 
control module has been successfully initialized. Okay, so what that will do, it just resets the module. It probably won't make any difference. We'd probably need to adjust the parameters if we actually wanted to make any difference to it, but that's something anyway. Complete list of guided tests we can do. So this will actually guide us through how we can interrogate and test this module. Yeah, operational check for various radar sensors. Um, you can see this is considerable. So, pretty impressive, I have to say. Pretty impressive. So we've got to the bottom of that one. Let's have a look at the seat, because that was the other one that came up with a, with a fault. So everything all good there right front dynamic seats. Let's just go into that. I've read the safety notice. Of course I haven't. So fault codes. Module carrier for the backrest is defective. Hmm. Okay, what's the module carrier? I'm sure we could find out. Module carrier for backrest. Fault code. The module carrier for the backrest is defective. Fault detection. Left air cushion for lateral support, which is exactly correct. No sensor signal. Okay, so that might just be a, a dodgy connection. Wow, it actually gives you the picture. That is amazing. So you can actually find that module and fix it. So that's going to be in the seat somewhere. I've absolutely no idea where it is. Um, DSRF. We'll find that and see if we can fix it. So that'll be fun. Well, I'm not going to bore you with taking the seat apart. I'm going to do that in my own time and I'll do another video about that uh, later. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed um, looking at the diagnostic system for the Mercedes-Benz. I mean, for 600 euros or a thousand Aussie dollars, I think that's a pretty good bargain. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a Chinese knockoff, but I'm not running a, a workshop. I'm just doing this for a bit of fun. And it will allow you to do 90% of what you could do with a genuine 30 grand diagnostic system. So I'm pretty happy with it. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to smash that like. It'd be great to have you as a subscriber and uh, hit that notification bell. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at mguy.tv or Twitter at mguy underscore TV. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now. Thank you.